Ellie, Eliphaz renders Job guilty. Then Eliphaz the Tanamite answered and said, Will a wise man give an answer a breath of understanding? And does he satisfy the pain in his belly? Arguing with sayings which are not necessary, and with words wherein is no profit. Have you not moreover cast off fear and accomplish, accomplish such words before the Lord? You are guilty because of the words of your mouth. Nor have you discern the words of the mighty. May your mouth convict you, and not I, for your lips will testify against you. What are you, the first man who was born, or were you made before the beaches? Have you heard the doctrine of the Lord, and has wisdom only come to you? What do you know that we do not know, that we do not? What do you understand that we do not also? Both the aged and the very old are among us. Much older than your father, you have been punished for only a few of your sins. You have spoken hauntingly and exceedingly. Why has your heart dared? Or what are your eyes set on? Have the, That you have vented your anger before the Lord and brought forth such words, words from your mouth? For who is the mortal that shall be blameless? Or who is born... Of a woman that shall be righteous, since he does not trust his saints, and heaven is not pure in his sight. Alas, then, alas, then, detestable and unclean is a man who drinks wrongdoings like water. But I will tell you, listen to me, I will tell you what I have now seen, what wise men say. They did not hide anything received from their fathers. To them alone the earth was given, and no stranger came among them. All the life of an ungodly man is spent in anxiety, and the years granted an oppressor are numbered. Fear is in his ears, and when he at last seems to be at peace, his destruction comes. Let him not believe he will return from darkness, for he has already been given over to the power of the sword. He is appointed to be food for vultures, and he knows in himself that he lives in a dead body. In a dark day it will carry him away like a whirlwind. Trouble and anguish will come upon him, and like a general he will fall in in the first rank. He, for he lifted his hands against the Lord, and acted defiantly against the Almighty Lord. He ran in his sight with insolence, with, with thickness of his wide shield. For he covered his face with his fat, and put a collar upon his thighs. May he lodge in deserted cities, in either uninhabited houses, and what they prepared others will carry away. Let him not grow rich, nor let his possessions remain. Let him not cast a shadow upon the earth. Neither let him escape the darkness. Let the wind wither his, his blossom, and let his flowers fall off. Let him not believe he will endure, for futility will be his reward. His harvest his harvest will perish before its gathering, and his branch will not flourish. May he be gathered prematurely like unripe grapes, and may he fall off like the blossom of an olive tree. For death is the witness of an ungodly man, and fire will burn the houses of those who take bribes. So he will conceive sorrows, his end will be vain, and his belly shall bear deceit. Job's friends are bad comforters. Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. You are all bad comforters. What order is there in words of wind? Or what troubles you that you answer thus? I also could speak as you do. If indeed your soul were in my soul's place, then I would attack you with words and shake my head at you. But would there, but would there were strength in my mouth, then I would not spare the movement of my lips. The Lord has rejected me. If I should speak... I would feel the pain of my wound. But if I also should be silent, how would I be less wounded? But now he has made me weary and a worn out fool. And you have laid hold of me? My falsehood has become a testimony. It rises up and it argues against me to my face. He vented his wrath and struck me down. He gnashed at me with his teeth. The arrows of the raiders fell on me. He attacked me with sharp darts of his eyes. 
he struck me on the cheek. With one accord they ran me down, for the Lord delivered me into the hands of an unjust man, and cast me upon the ungodly. When I was at peace, he rejected me. He took me by the hair out of the hair. He took me by the hair of my head and pulled it out. He set me up as a mark. They surrounded me with spears aimed at my mind. Without sparing me, they poured out my gall on the ground, running at me with all their strength. They knocked me down, head over heels. I sued a sath cloth on my skin, and my strength is spent on the ground. My belly is on fire because of weeping, and shade is on my eyelids. Yet there was no wrongdoing in my hands, and my prayer is pure. O earth, o earth, do not cover the blood of my flesh, nor may my cry have a place. Now behold, my witness is in the heavens, and one who knows me thoroughly is on high. May my supplication come before the Lord, and may my eyes pour out tears in his presence. May there be rebuttal for a man before the Lord, as soon as a son of man with his neighbor. For my years are numbered, and I shall go the way of no return. I am perishing, carried away by, by the wind. <clears throat> and I ask for a burial place, but cannot obtain it. I am tired of entreating. Yet, what have I done? Strangers have stolen my possessions. Who is he? Let him join hands with me, for you hid their heart for, from discernment. Therefore, you will not exalt them. He will declare evils as their portion. But my eyes melt away because of my children. Notes from the previous page. 14.17 is a mortal man. Job has transgressed unwillingly. That is sin not leading to death. 1 John 5.16.17 But one day it may also come forth out of the bag of secrecy into the public publicity of the judgment. 15, 1 through 6, Blessed Job bears a type of the Holy Church Universal, and his friends bear the likeness of heretics. <clears throat> Fifteen twenty. With their feeble insight, Job's friends did not perceive that the Lord had given him over to be tempted, so that, like an athlete of Christ, he might be fashioned by the temptations and attain to a crown of greater glory. Sixteen eight. St. Hezekiah compares this verse to Christ's betrayal at Judas's hands. John thirteen twenty one, Matthew twenty six twenty five, sixteen seventeen. Compare this verse to First Peter two twenty two and Luke twenty three twenty four.